Greetings, my friends. I'm still continuing with that discussion and reflections on John chapter 9, the healing of the blind man, the man who was born without eyesight, that Jesus healed. We have seen how Jesus cares about us. He passes by our situations. We have seen how Jesus has the big picture when he deals with our situation. It's not about what we did or what people did to us. It's about his mission to the world, that he must do what he came to do, for he came for nothing but to save us. So he is the man who was born to live and die and resurrect to save us. And he came to restore the eyesight of this man so that he may be complete. And we saw how when we reject Jesus, we remain in our blindness and we can't see. And so friends, as we continue with, um, with this discussion, I want to focus on what then happened after he was healed. Because the Bible is very clear that after he was healed, verse eight, all right. Uh, in fact, verse 7 says, And when he had said this, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. We looked at that. When Jesus heals you, he sends you away on your mission to do what you have to do. But he went, washed his way. And the Bible says, he came seeing. He came seeing. Jesus is here to change our lives, to make us see. And the Bible verse, say, verse 8 says, And neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, It is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. I could read on right there, my friends, because the story then says the neighbors got interested in what was happening in this man's life. When Jesus heals you and sends you on your mission, people will want to know what happened to you. What has happened? You mean you just left your job and you started doing ministry? You mean this is what has happened? Where was this before? We don't know you doing this. We don't know you looking like this. You suddenly stopped drinking. You stopped smoking. You stopped doing all the things that were messing your life. What happened? Jesus sent you to Siloam. He healed you. He gave you your sight. So prepare to have discussions with your neighbors. Some call them noisy neighbors or nosy, noisy neighbors. <laughs> yes, people will always talk. But be prepared to say, yes, I was blind, but now I see. You think I look like him? Yes, that guy whom was blind is no longer here because the one you now see can see. The discussion didn't end there because it escalated, right? Verse 10, therefore said they unto him, how was your, how was, how were thine eyes opened? How? How did it happen? And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus. So now we know this man asked, who is this guy? And he was told it's Jesus of Nazareth. He made clay, anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. So this man now knows what happened because the clay was made when he was blind. But now he knows what happened. Friends, you may not understand how God did it, but you will know how he did it. And so he tells them, I received my sight. Then people started asking, where is he? And he said, I know not. So instead of focusing on thanksgiving for what was done to the man, they now wanted to know who is he. If you read further this story, it says the issue escalated until it got to the Jews at the temple and at the, at the temple now listen to this verse 14 says and it was the sabbath day when jesus made clay and opened his eyes it's not a coincidence that the sabbath is mentioned here you see the best way to do church the best way to keep the sabbath is to alleviate the suffering of mankind 
Did you hear what I said? Real worship and serving nations and doing what our Father sent us to do is alleviating the suffering. Haven't you heard? Jesus says, many shall come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, where did we see you hungry and feed you? Where did we see you in hospital and we visited you? In prison and we visited you? Where, 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 where? And he says, what you did to the little ones, you were doing it unto me. So the best way to worship God is to alleviate the suffering. That is the ministry that we should be involved in. And so he says, he, he made me whole. Now, they wanted to know where he is and he said, I don't know. And then listen to what the neighbors did, verse 18. They brought, they brought him to the Pharisees, all right? That was blind. You see, the moment you, you, you make God's act a church board item for discussion, you have lost it. What God is doing in people's lives is not for your discussion. In the church board, in your councils, don't discuss the act of God. Celebrate it. If you don't understand it, ask God to open your eyes that you also may see what is being done in the life of that sister, the life of that brother, the life of that woman. Don't begin to have church boards to discuss the act of God. Now, when they did that, in fact, they asked him, um, what happened to you? And he told them exactly what happened. And these guys then said on verse um, six, 16, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was division amongst them. You see, when you begin to discuss God's acts, you will be divided. Because some will not believe because of their positions, their hirings. They want to protect their positions as leaders and they want to be seen to be the ones with power and authority. But this act shows that they are not the ones who are powerful. So they will reject it. Because if you read further on, they will say, this man is a sinner. We don't know who he is. This man, this fellow, in fact, they call him this fellow, a very de denigrating way to address a fellow brother. This fellow, we don't know him. He's a sinner. Then they called the parents of this man and asked, is this your son? Was he born blind? Yes. So how come that he now sees? Questioning the act of God and calling witnesses accusing parents of doing something that's magical. And they say, look, we know he's blind, but as to how he sees, he's old enough, ask him. And the man was asked, how do you see? He says, I've already told you and have not believed, so what's your problem? The rest of the story says they cast him out of the temple. They censured him. Perhaps they disfellowshipped him because the Bible says it very clearly. If you read verse, um, from verse 35, it says, Jesus heard that they had cast him out of the temple. Did you hear that? They cast him out. Friends, I don't know where you are today, but perhaps you are very convinced that God did something for you that no one else is accepting. You feel rejected and neglected because people are not understanding that God gave you this vision. Let me give you this word of encouragement. Do what he sent you to do. And never mind your noisy, nosy neighbors. Go ahead and do what God asked you to do. Because at the end of the day, you will account to him, not to men. You will not give an account to men, but to God himself. Let me finish off this chapter by this discussion that then happened later on. Because when he was cast out for his testimony, the Bible then says, and Jesus found him, verse 35, and said unto him, Do you believe on the Son of God? And the man answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? I would like to believe he knew who he was talking to. This man called Jesus. But he didn't know him as the Son of God. Take note. He knew this is Jesus. They would have told him, that's the guy who gave you sight. 
He knew him as Jesus of Nazareth. But the question was, do you know or do you believe in the Son of God? Now things get personal. And finally he says, who is he that I must believe him? And Jesus said unto him, you are both seeing him and it is he that talks with you. Let me finish up on this point. When God gave you whatever he gave you, for this man it was eyesight. For what purpose? That he may see the Son of God. Because Jesus says, it is he whom you both see and you are talking to. The blessing that you are asking from God right now, is it so that you can know Jesus much better or it is just for you to go and have fun and pleasure out there? The blessing that God has given you, is it helping you to see God much more clearly and who he is? Or that blessing, in quotes, has now made you actually turn away and leave God? You said your marriage is a blessing, but has it made you see God? You said your job is a blessing from God, he gave it to you, but is it helping you see and talk to God even more? Are you still praying? You were praying for a car and God gave you the car, but are you still praying every time you get into that car? You asked for a wife, he gave you a wife. Are you still thankful and talking to him about that wife? You asked for a job and he gave it to you. Are you still talking to him and seeing him in your marriage, in your job, and as you use your car or whatever he gave to you? Who is he that I might believe him? It is the one who gave you the blessing you have. Can you see him? Thank God for those who will be like this man. Because the Bible says, and verse 39, and he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. When God has revealed himself to you in the blessing of your life, your health, your job, your children, your marriage, your assets, whatever God has given to you, because you sought him first, and all these things were given to you. You sought God and his righteousness, and he gave you things, stuff. Will you finally believe in him and still worship him as God? Because many people, after they have received what they have received from God, they forget that there is God. And they start eating and drinking. And therefore, Jesus finishes off and says, And Jesus said, For judgment I came into the world, that they which see, that which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees then asked and said, um, are, are we also blind? And he said, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you say we see, therefore your sin remains. You see, when you just start discussing God's acts and miracles and you make yourself a seer, someone who knows better what should have happened and how this could have been done, Jesus says your sins remain. So your prayers of confession are no longer heard. So friends, this was my attempt to reflect on a chapter that I know many of us have read. I'm going through the whole book of John. I've read much further now, but I'm really thankful to God that in this book of John, there are so many lessons that you and I could be blessed by. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Remember, before you go, like and subscribe and follow this channel. We'll be blessed to always have you come back to watch more. Thank you, my friends. I love you and God bless you.